All right. I want to give a special personal welcome to our friends from uh, Sacramento. What is the official name of your group? <laughs> That's a great question. We're the Presbyterian <laughs> Disaster hey. Assistance Team. From the Presbytery of, of Sacramento. Sacramento. Sacramento, okay. And for those of you who participate in the open mic, we're here in this <laughs> space, in the sanctuary space, because the chapel's messed up. And this is what's going to happen. These guys are going to be here all week. And at the end of next week, the chapel is not going to be messed up anymore. Okay? All right? But I'm spending time with you. It depends on your point of view. My name is Bob Brashear. I'm the pastor here at West Park Presbyterian Church. There's a deep and rich social history that here that needs to be remembered. In the early years, uh, this became a refuge for uh, Chinese uh, during the time when there was an effort to get rid of the Chinese from the city and push them out. It was a place of refuge for them. Now leap ahead to 1978 when this was the first congregation of all the mainline denominations to fully welcome gay and lesbian people at every level of leadership and this was where the more light movement began in the church. And because of that, there were people that would come here from 40 miles away to be part of the church. And when the AIDS crisis hit, it hit here in a very big way. I'll leap ahead again and say that uh, after the Occupy Wall Street movement at Zuccotti Park got evicted from Zuccotti Park, we welcomed over 100 occupiers who lived here for about a month. And about two dozen occupiers who created a uh, co-op and lived here for almost a year. During the 80s, uh, there was a lot of deferred maintenance that just was not dealt with. That's one of the reasons why the Presbytery simply wanted to sell the building and, and be done with it. But from our perspective, the history here was so deep and rich in the sort of spiritual feel of all the lives and of all the things that people had done to be witnesses here that we really needed to see if we could keep it alive. We came back in in March 2011 with no heat, with no restrooms, there had been a burst pipe and water poured down for about seven days and really destroyed all the ceilings. We were able to raise $86,000 to put in a new green boiler and we're now at the place where we've taken place of everything that we need to do legally to make it a place that people can come into and that gives us now the opportunity to invite in work groups to do projects that will move us beyond the mere legal to where it can be a place that can be really welcoming and comfortable for people again. The very first project is going to be in our chapel. We took the responsibility to restore the ceiling and now it's your job to take care of the walls. So let's walk down there and take a look. This room is where we have the weekly uh, open mics. It's also a place where there's been theatrical presentations now we have to get all these walls uh, stripped and painted and begin to make it look like a warm, welcoming place again. And that's what you guys are going to do. So it's been a very difficult time for the congregation. Uh, it's been very stressful. If you can imagine being in a place with no heat and no restrooms and worshiping there, that's been difficult. And the future has always been a little bit hard to see. But this is the first of reconstruction in this building, and we hope this is just the beginning. heading off to the church, take a look at the scope of work, and that be the church. Well, this is the chapel room that we are going to paint. That is the wall we will be painting. That is the damage from water pipes bursting. There's the crew. Let's see who we got here, There's James. Say hi, Susan. <laughs> There's Denise. Got Tom up here caulking in all of our cracks and seams from all the water damage. He's doing an awesome job. Our goal is to get this wall painted up by the end of the week. Say hi, Phyllis. Hi. Hey, all right. So my crew, once again, just kicked batuti. That is one scraped wall. That is all the molding and casing all cocked in. And I believe we should be priming these walls tomorrow. 
Good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> We're taking down everything that's covered up the Lord's table for the last 40 years. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is the original. That is what the ceiling looks like now. That is what it will look like, hopefully within a year or two. One of the best things about doing stuff like this, for me personally, is that builds my faith in God and in what the good book teaches us to go out and do good and serve the world. Every time I am on a mission trip, great things happen. The most amazing thing about this trip is bringing this church to life again. This looks so amazing. We're so grateful for the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Group to come from Sacramento. Uh, the first group of volunteers we've actually had roll up their sleeves and do work, and it's mind-blowing, transformation. And now with this restoration, uh, not only can we use it for performance spaces, but also we see great opportunity to, for example, for working in the sanctuary to move services back into this room. It's beautifully set up for that. It really brightens it up and it gives a sense of, uh, what I like, it gives a sense of possibility. And it just really shines. I love it. I, I think you guys are doing a remarkable job. It's wonderful. It's looking great. It's smiling. It, it's, a, it, it's a big transformation from where it once was to where it is now. It's, it's great. I am now done. Gaze upon the wall. After five days of work, we had walls that looked like this. Now, we have walls, molding, columns, chair rails, baseboard, patched, polished, and shined up, and looking good. It's my personal goal to bring it back to this sort of uh, quality.